Cool. Thanks. Yeah, this is functional farming with nerves. Uh, this is going to be how I use Elixir and nerves in production uh, at FarmBot. So first, a quick who am I? I'm Connor Rigby. I do uh, all the Elixir code at FarmBot. There's four developers currently, and uh, I'm the only Elixir one right now. I'm also on the nerves and nerves hub core teams, as well as maintainer of a few hex packages you uh, may have heard of before. Anyways, can I get a quick show of hands? Has anyone actually heard of FarmBot before this? Okay, cool, fair amount. Um, has anyone actually used nerves before this? Oh, man, that was a little early. But um, anyways, so FarmBot is a uh, CNC 3D printer style machine. It moves <coughs> around in an XYZ space. I would move it around, but I'm not gonna walk off camera here. Um, it moves around like a 3D printer or a CNC router, if you've seen that before. So if we look here on the far right side, or I'm sorry, on the far left side, we can see what FarmBot's current position is. On the bottom down here, we can see some uh, messages coming in in real time. And then on uh, this side here, you can see some manual controls we can use. Uh, here, we can toggle this light on and off. That one's pretty cool. It's how we get promotional material at nighttime shots to make it look really cool. Uh, plants don't care about that light. It's just for looks. Uh, here, we can actually move FarmBot around, hopefully. Won't knock anything off the table. It's a little shaky. Um, there we go, we move it around a bit, and then I also built this demo to show kind of those individual pieces that FarmBot uses to do more complex things. So if you see it, we're going to move that uh, gray weeder tool. That's how we get rid of weeds when FarmBot takes a picture of them. It looks and sees for any weeds and smashes them with that little tool. Um, really efficient way of doing it, you know. So here, hopefully this works out all right. Can't actually see it from over here. But it's going to pick up that tool, move it over just over to the other slot. That sure sounds like it's doing something. All right, I, I can't really see if it worked, but it looks like it worked. <laughs> Great. Um, so, you know, we got this message here down. Did I do good? Uh, you know, leave a rating, like, and subscribe. <laughs> um, a cool thing about FarmBot is it is fully open source, start to finish. This includes all the code that runs on the device itself, as well as uh, our server and our front end are all you know, open source. Uh, this also includes the hardware. Um, you can take FarmBot and 3D print your own, basically, with all the CAD files that we publish online. Um, also, our, um, so our back end is in Rails. This is what FarmBot talks to behind the scenes. Uh, it stores uh, user information, settings, things like that, and then those stored sequences that you saw there before. Um, our front end is a pretty standard single page app. We use Webpack, uh, React, and TypeScript to you know, deliver the user interface to customers. Um, to communicate with all three of these pieces, you know, we have the front end, the back end, and uh, the device itself, we use RabbitMQ. This allows for you to do cool stuff like uh, talk to the bot rather than have the bot waiting for you to tell it to do things and the bot can report data behind the scenes when the user is not even involved. Um, at the very lowest level, FarmBot, uh, you can't see it from this angle, but there's a smaller or a larger board. That's what controls the motors. It's based on uh, ramps and uh, Arduino, and we call it the Farmduino. But the cool stuff, Elixir is what actually runs on the device itself. So there's the top board. If you come look up later, you can see it is uh, a Raspberry Pi. That's what we ship on. It's uh, runs all the low-level code, like talking to the motor controller, as well as the higher-level stuff, like uh, communicating over AMQP, MQTT, etc. Um, to do this, we use Nerves. Nerves is a set of tools to craft and deploy Elixir and Erlang, uh, really bulletproof firmware for devices. Uh, what is Nerves? Nerves is another open-source project, like FarmBot. Nerves also uses a set of open source tools just like FarmBot. So where might you find Nerves? Um, Nerves runs on, uh, you know, low level devices like the Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's what FarmBot ships on. We also have BeagleBoard support, which is another set of boards. They're more of a industrial ready type board where you can actually take their schematic, modify it, and sell it as a product yourself. 
Uh, NERVs also can target, you know, virtual hardware such as uh, QEMU. In case your company hasn't decided, you know, what hardware they're going with, you can target QEMU and get yourself up and running with that. Uh, we also have support for Volter, which is like a digital ocean type service where you can build your firmware, maybe put a Phoenix web application on it, and then deploy it straight to Volter. Uh, this is, you know, it, it can work for some situations. It's a nice alternative to, say, Heroku. Um, we're also working on getting support for Amazon AWS in the future, hopefully. Uh, this will be similar to how the Volter image works, but uh, with, you know, all the backings that you get with AWS. So how does NERVS do all this? NERVS uses Linux behind the scenes. Uh, it has a really, all of our supported boards have a really slim down Linux kernel that boots on the manner of like f between, you know, 10 and 15 seconds, depending on the application. Uh, NERVS also uses a package called BuildRoot, uh, which is what is responsible for taking the Linux kernel, cross compiling it on your host machine, as well as some of the Linux utilities that you're, you know, we all know and love like uh, cat, grep, things like that, it makes sure all those are available on the target board if you need them. Uh, with NERVS, you don't usually end up needing those kind of things because the Elixir tooling is all there for you and you get all that stuff for free. Um, to bundle those two things, uh, FWUP is used. We take your, uh, your Elixir code and bundle it with the Linux kernel and the build root files and make it into a, this really small package that you can uh, transport to your device somehow, whether it be on an SD card or you push it over the network or it streams from something like Nerves Hub, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, Nerves also has tools for runtime utilities. Uh, WPA Supplicant is what handles uh, Wi-Fi. We have Nerves Network, it wraps that and Ethernet control and even link local gadget support if you want. <coughs> Um, NERVS also has this sister project called Elixir Circuits. It was formerly known as Elixir Ale, a uh, spinoff of Erlang Ale. So this is what allows you to communicate over those low-level protocols like UART, uh, SPY, I2C, things like that. Um, it also allows you to toggle GPIOs similar to, uh, you know, this lighting. That's a GPIO, general purpose input-output. Um, Elixir Ale can help with that kind of stuff as well. And NERVS just supports this right out of the box. But really, you can use NERVS to craft anything that you would use Elixir for. So a lot of people put Phoenix applications on their NERVS projects and um, you know, use it as a user interface or even, like we said, deploy it to Voltor or hopefully in the future uh, AWS. So uh, you can't quite see that, but um, that slide, it's a picture of the slide that said uh, FarmBot Hearts open source. And so a cool thing about being open source is that uh, I can just put my open source code right on up on the slides and we can look at some typos that I've made. So here we have, uh, you know, this is a simple function. It's a gen server call. We have set position. It comes in as X, Y, Z. Well, uh, maybe I made a typo. Maybe some other open source contributor made the typo. I didn't do it. Um, we have Y, Z, X is how it actually gets applied. Um, not a huge deal, but you know, we can see this is this up one, it's gonna move the X axis, it's gonna move forward, and the X position actually updates because I've got the wrong code on the device. But um, this was supposed to be a broken device that I forgot to revert. Um, imagine the Z position had updated there. You know, we have broken code, it's stuck on the device right now. Uh, we have to update it somehow. Uh, it's really easy to fix, you know, it's just simple stuff. Should have caught this in tests, forgot to write the test, whatever. We have X, Y, Z, now it's right in the right order. No big deal. So, oh man, you can't see that either. Um, Mix, or Nerves builds out this tool, Mix Firmware. Um, you can't quite see it, but that's what the output is there. It takes your FW, or it takes the FW up config and merges it with your Erlang and OTP release, as well as the Linux kernel and build root stuff that's all pre-cached by NERVS, so you don't have to do it yourself, and bundles it all up. And uh, now we need to get this code onto the device. Again, you can't see that, but it's uh, the, another mix tool we use, mix firmware.push. So this is gonna take the firmware that I have built on my device, that code that we fixed just a minute ago, and we're gonna push it over SSH directly to the device. This prevents me from having to like walk over there, grab the SD card, you know, dink around up here waiting for uh, firmwares to push. So here we go. We're going to do another you know, demo here. Hopefully this uploads and all goes well. So we're going to hit this button and it's actually going to start streaming the firmware over SSH to the device. 
Um, the FarmBot firmwares are kind of large. It's a pretty mature app. It's been, you know, coming together for on the three years, so 65 megs. It's not not great. It takes a little bit long to, uh, you know, push the update. And also, I'm over here, so I've got to stall for a second or two while uh, that moves around. But a cool thing is, while it's updating, actually, we can, you know, still move it around. Uh, it's still fully functional, even though it's applying a, a hot code update in real time right now. Um, here in just a second, once we hit 100%, it's going to go offline. Uh, won't be able to communicate with it. It's going to actually go offline and uh, apply the firmware to the SD card. Uh, when it comes back up in a moment or two, uh, you might not be able to hear it, but the motors are going to turn off for a second while it's rebooting. And then here in a second, they're going to turn back on again. And uh, then we're going to send it back home, and hopefully we'll see it uh, keep moving. Uh, we should also see some logs on that bottom pane start showing up here pretty soon. Lights are good. <laughs> Lights means it's doing something. Um, should be coming up here pretty soon, hopefully. The light stopped blinking, so. Uh, oh, it starts again. More lights. Oh, well. Oh, there we go. Hey, look at that. Here we go. Farmout came right back online. So we just applied that uh, code update here in real time. And it's also stuck doing something God knows what. So somewhat successful. Um, yeah, so here we go. So you might think, uh, what would happen if we had pushed that code update to like all 500 farm bots? Say, um, you know, it got past QA, someone didn't catch it, and we have a bug in all the farm bots out in production right now. I obviously can't SSH into each individual one. It would take forever. That took, you know. God knows how long up here on stage, and imagine if I was doing it to each and every device. Um, would take too long. So we uh, came together and built Nerves Hub. Uh, this is a collaboration between a number of uh, companies using Nerves in production. We've all been kind of spinning our own, and it all ended up looking more or less the same. So we thought we'd take it all and uh, build it in the same application that everyone can use. So how do we use Nerves Hub? Uh, again, you can't really see that. but. Um, we would take our, our firmware, we'd just mix it just like normal mix firmware, nothing special about it. Um, and that would spit out just the same firmware that we're used to. And then we have this new mix task that you can't see here on stage, but it says uh, mix nerves hub firmware publish. So this is going to upload the code or the upload the firmware file that we just mixed up and uh, store it on nerves hub for devices to pull down later on. Um, so you can think of it kind of like Heroku, but for embedded firmwares. So I'm not going to actually demo Nerves Hub working uh, just because I don't want to update all 500 of my devices in production. You know, didn't seem like the greatest of ideas to put in the live demo. But um, yeah, so that's what I got. I just want to give a quick special thanks to uh, the companies that are actually funding Nerves and Nerves Hub. Uh, right now, there's a consultancy called Very. They were kind of one of the first ones to uh, express their interest in this. Um, there's also Latote, which is where Josh and Schneck works, and uh, SmartRent, where Frank Honleth works. They are the ones kind of sponsoring Nerves and Nerves Hub development at the moment. And then I also want to give a you know quick shout out to our Open Collective backers. Uh, these are the folks that uh, really help us pick up the new, latest, and greatest hardware as it comes out, and uh, you know make T-shirts and swag and stuff like that. So, yeah, any questions? Yeah, so we uh, we shipped the whole company out to NASA, I think, like last, not last July, but the July before that. Yeah, they were thinking about putting kind of one about that size, a little bit smaller than that, um, inside of a project that MIT uses, uh, or the MIT created called Food Computer, I think is what they called it. And they essentially want to put that inside of one and then put it on uh, ISS. Uh, we haven't heard much back from that yet. And NASA's pretty secretive, yeah. Any other questions? Sure. So you mentioned the 500 of these out in production. Is that, is that all sort of one by one thing, or you got a, is there a bunch of different customers? What's your model of you to where these things are? Is it like one big farm, or you got a 500? Oh, no. So customers buy these. You know, they usually, so this one's really small. They're usually about three times that size. And then we also have a larger one for much bigger scale. It's about uh, four times, three times that size. Um, 
that people, uh, you know, customers, people have them personally. People also uh, use them for schools and education, things like that. A lot of colleges buy them um, for STEM projects to, for students to put together. Yeah, yeah. The customer is never concerned with firmware updates. They just go straight to the device. Uh, usually works a bit better than what happened here. I'm not sure what happened, but yeah, it's usually very smooth. It very rarely goes wrong. Sure. So the firmware update does it enable like operating system reboot and everything? Right. Yeah. Um, Did you consider like hot code updates? Yeah. So I have that. It, it works. It works very well. I use it for development a lot. There's. It's just hard to put into a slide. It's. Uh, it's a little bit more involved, but we don't usually use that for pushing uh, updates to devices. It's usually more used for development. Okay. Just to sure. continue on, so Nose has support for that, or Nose? Say again? Nose, <coughs> does that have support for the hot code update, or it's only... Right, well, Erlang has support for it, so... Erlang has support for it. Yeah. Right. So if you have a running, uh, if you have a running OTP release, you can hot code reload it however you like. Uh, Ner Nerves isn't really involved with it. You can just keep sending it updates, and it'll keep applying them the same way you would a live server. How you know Nerves doesn't give you the tooling as much as Erlang has the tooling built in already. Um, yeah. Sure. So the only way you talk to these devices right now is over MPP, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah, I, I use the hot code reloading for development mostly. Um, in Nerves, it's usually easier just to push the entire image. Uh, you usually, like if you have, like to update the Linux kernel, obviously you can't use Erlang to do such a thing. It's just easier to push the whole code up or the whole firmware update. Cool. Anything else? Great. Thanks.